I love wetlands. Wetlands are some of the most interesting ecosystems that you find in nature. Wetlands are lush and green, and they are life-giving. There's no place in Africa or Southern Africa than Zambia for wetlands. Nearly 20% of Zambia's land mass is covered by wetlands. And these wetlands provide many ecosystem goods and services. Wetlands in Zambia vary in sizes. By definition, wetlands are any place that are filled with water for a considerable amount of time during the year. And they vary in sizes. There's, some of them stretch from horizon to horizon. And some of them are just little ponds in one's backyard where water fills up naturally during the year. And the vegetation and the animals and the birds that live in there depend on this functioning little wetlands. Wetlands are so important because wetlands provide many ecosystem goods and services. For example, they are important for birds. In Zambia, we have about 750 bird species recorded, and wetlands account to almost 450 birds. Interestingly, one of the most important wetland-dependent birds is the wattled crane. And our Zambian wetlands account for almost over half the global population of these watered cranes. Furthermore, wetlands provide valuable habitat for many species of mammals, most of them endemic and endemic and can only be found in these particular wetlands. For example, the Kafue lechwe, which is an endemic aquatic antelope that is adapted to living in the Kafue Flats wetlands. Going forward, wetlands are also important for our local people's sustenance. For example, they provide fishing grounds, pastoral grounds for our local people to be able to have a sustenance or, or, or live. And also wetlands play a critical role in our culture. Our cultures are so intricately dependent or intricately linked to the wetlands. For example, one such uh, cultural significance event is the Kuomboko ceremony, which is celebrated in the western province of Zambia, where the king of the Lozi people moves from the low-lying area to the higher ground and is filled with spectacle and, and grace and attracts so many people to this particular area, both local and foreign tourists, bringing the much-needed economic viability for this particular area. Wetlands are also at the center of climate change mitigation. Wetlands are able to sequester a lot more carbon and store more carbon than some of the most important ecosystems that we have worldwide. Now, let me talk to you a little bit more about the wetland that I've worked in for the last 17 years of my career, the Kafue Flats. And to demonstrate to you how important wetlands are to our national economy. The Kafue Flats is located in south central Zambia and is drained by the Kafue River, which is a major tributary of the Zambezi. The Kafue Flats is bound by two hydroelectric dams. And these dams provide about 50 to 60 percent of our electricity production and supply in Zambia. Furthermore, the Kafue Flats provide about 89 percent of sugar production in our country. Also, 44% of water supply to Lusaka is coming from the Kafue Flats. And if you're a meat lover like myself, 20% of our national herd is found on the Kafue Flats. Mind you, the Kafue Flats is only 6,500 square kilometers. But the economic importance of the Kafue Flats is unmatched. Now, given the importance of wetlands in general to economies, to our sustenance, to climate change mitigation, you would think that wetlands are at the center of conservation and preservation. But sadly, that is not the case. Wetlands are on the front line 
of destruction due to um, development. According to the Global Outlook on Wetlands by the Ramsar Convention, suggests that since the 1970s, we have lost about 35% of our wetlands globally, and that we are losing wetlands three times faster than any other ecosystems, including forest. This is a dire situation that needs to be addressed. There's so many pressures of, on wetlands in Zambia as well, and we are losing most of our wetlands. One of the pressures is that during development stages, we are building over most of our wetlands. And for example, here in Lusaka, every year we have perennial urban floods. And we wonder why, because we have built over almost all our remaining urban wetlands. Furthermore, wetlands are almost an open resource area. Anybody can go in, settle there, and enjoy the, the resources within those particular areas. And they are unregulated. And this causes a lot of pressures on our wetlands. One of the issues also we face in the wetlands is that most of the animal species that we do find in the wetlands are under a lot of threats. For example, on the Kafue Flats, where we find the Kafue Lechwe, we've lost almost 80% of these species due to poaching, disease, and other issues that affect the population viability of these species. In the 1970s, the lecture were populating about 100,000, and now only 20,000 remain. And the trends suggest that if nothing is done to save these species, in the next 20 years, we'll, we'll have a local extinction of this endemic species. And mind you, we've already experienced local extinction of the wildebeest on the Kafue Flats. The other pressure that we are finding on the, on, in wetlands in Zambia is also the issue of mining. Large-scale mining are being undertaken in these major wetlands, affecting the aesthetic value of these wetlands, compromising the tourism vi viability, and also causing a lot of degradation for the habitat for the many species that depend on these wetlands. In Lokimba National Park, for example, 65% of the national park is earmarked for gypsum mining, and this is going unabated. Given the fact that the wetlands are important and they're under threat, what then shall we do to save them? I think that we cannot go on as business as usual and see local extinction of species, degradation of our wetlands. We need to find solutions that will save our wetlands going forward. And these solutions need to be innovative. One of the solutions is that we really need to do a lot of inventory of our wetland ecosystems in Zambia. We need to inventory them and delineate them, both at national level, provincial level, district, and also at municipality level. That way, Developmental planners are able, will be able to look at wetlands and secure them away from developmental activities, such as providing uh, plots for people to build in, to build on. Furthermore, we have to manage effectively the our wetlands that are, are existing at the moment. Our wetlands are not managed at all. But we need to find also innovative ways in which we manage our wetlands going forward. One of the ways in which we can do so is to encourage partnerships. Government alone cannot save these wetlands. But encouraging partnerships of NGOs, private sector, to come in and manage these wetlands together with government. For example, I work with an organization called International Crane Foundation and we're partnering with the government of the Republic of Zambia for the next 20 years to try and restore the Cafe Flats to its former glory. And we're anchoring our work based on three major pillars. One, research and monitoring to be able to inform adaptive management of these wetlands. Secondly, law enforcement. Encourage law enforcement. There's so many rules and regulations that, that uh, 
that govern the management of these wetlands, but they're not being followed. So we need to put these um, law enforcement activities. And thirdly, we also need to encourage local communi communities' participation in wetland management and mitigation of some of the threats that persist in these wetlands. We also need to restore our wetlands. Restoration meaning we need to be able to undertake some activities such as removing of invasive alien species and shrubs that have encroached in these wetlands to save them and to restore them for, to productivity that will be able to support biodiversity in these wetlands. And also one of the most important aspects that we need to undertake is to encourage what we call restoration of environmental flaws or integrated flaws. Many of our wetlands are earmarked for damming, and some of them have been dammed already for hydropower generation and irrigation. But all, almost all these dams are optimized for hydropower generation and ignores the downstream ecosystem users. Because of this, the flooding extents have been uh, impacted, the duration has been impacted, and so we need to restore the natural flooding regimes. And we need to encourage our engineers and dam operators not only to optimize operation of dam for electricity pr uh, production, but also to respect the downstream ecosystem users. Given all this that I've said, costs a lot of money. And we need to be able to see how we can sustain a lot of these activities. One of the things that we can do is to leverage the importance of wetlands in climate change mitigation and supporting local communities and our economy to encourage climate financing and carbon trading that is focused on wetlands. That way, we're able to sustain a lot of our efforts in mitigating some of these issues on climate change. Wetlands are important. And our lives are intricately dependent on the functioning of these wetlands. Therefore, we, oft, we ought to save these wetlands from destruction. Thank you.